Come and join Ancient Arts on an exciting journey to rebuild the first English theatre. This theatre is based on one found at an Anglo-Saxon royal site at Evering in Northumberland. This location has been an important site since Neolithic times and was the site of an Iron Age hill fort. Just below the hill fort, the Anglo-Saxon kings of Bernicia built a royal complex consisting of a great hall, a great enclosure and an auditorium, or theatre known as Adgeferin. This was excavated in the late 1950s by Brian Hope Taylor and his team. It would have provided short-term accommodations for the king and his court, and it is thought to have been burnt down twice, by Pender and Cadwathlon in 632-3, and again by Pender in the 650s. It was rebuilt the second time, but was eventually abandoned in about 685. The excavation revealed nine more or less concentric trenches, forming arcs of a triangular ground plan. The trenches, which were of varying depths, held solid timber walls of substantial vertical timbers with intermittent larger posts. Hope Taylor saw these remains as representing a tiered structure similar to a Roman theatre. Having visited the site in 2011, David Chapman of Ancient Arts developed the concept of rebuilding the theatre as both an archaeological reconstruction and as a modern theatre events venue for Bede's World in Jarrow. This open air museum has been built on the site of a disused shipyard and oil refinery to celebrate the life and works of an Anglo-Saxon monk, the Venerable Bede. The site has a number of reconstructed Anglo-Saxon buildings and a suitable unused banked area that could be incorporated into the build. Working in partnership with the builder, John Ward of Brantones Limited, Ancient Arts developed an innovative stone caving technique to rebuild the theatre within the budget awarded by the Heritage Lottery Fund to Bede's World for the project. To rebuild the structure using original materials and tools would have cost many times more than the budget awarded. So the construction team put together by Brantones and Ancient Arts had to devise an innovative combination of both ancient and modern techniques and materials. It was decided to use wire gabions with breeze block sides filled with locally quarried stone to build the structure of the seating. The gabions were then covered with marine plywood on which English oak boards were attached to make the seating surfaces and English larch was used as a facing material to closely simulate the appearance of the original timber structures. Locally quarried stone was put down into the gabions to form the walkways. These wooden components were then sealed with an oil-based preservative. The ends of the tiers were finished with a lime render to simulate wattle and daub found during the original excavations. The performance space on the ground was again topped with local stone. The banks at the side were seeded with grass and wildfire seeds for additional seating. In addition to the seating area, a stage and two Anglo-Saxon style craft workshops were also built. None of these structures were found at the original site but they were essential for this site to be used as both a modern events venue and for craft activities. These timber frame workshops were made using modern tools and materials, again because of our budgetary restraints. But these were finished with lime mortar and lime wash walls to create the look of a wattle and door walls and completed with a turf roof. The stage was built in the same way to provide a covered performance space for bands and performers. Once the theatre was complete, you can see how it integrates beautifully into the existing site. To test the acoustic qualities of the site, an amateur sea shanty was attempted. Me up in me oil skins and jumpers, no more of this dog can be seen. Just tell me old shipmates I take a trip mates, I'll see you someday on Fiddler's Green. The effect was quite remarkable. The singer had a very strong impression of singing into a microphone, illustrating the excellent acoustic qualities of the original structure. A large post hole was found at this point on the original site that may have held a staffolos, which was a king's ceremonial staff of authority. Here is where judgments were given and proclamations made. A number of Anglo-Saxon inspired flags and banners were made to provide pageantry for the site. Here Emma Wright is painting her designs onto the flags. 
To help get the kids involved, a mini Anglo-Saxon playhouse was kindly donated by Brantones Limited. With volunteers from the museum, a carved stone petroglyph or rock drawing was made for the courtyard at the entrance to the site. The imagery for this was based on the Lindisfarne Gospels. A large block of local Northumberland limestone was set into place outside the museum. The design was created in the studio by the Ancient Arts design team and was carefully drawn onto the piece of linen. The lines were then pricked into the fabric and the design was ponced onto the surface of stone. This was then drawn in charcoal and then carved using stone chisels. The weather was not always kind to us. A layer of conservation varnish was applied to the petroglyph to preserve it for posterity. The completed petroglyph with Pearl Saddington who was fundamental in the realisation of this project. On a beautiful summer's evening, archaeology and theatre came together for a sell-out inaugural performance of the comedy A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to Durham. Refreshments were readily available from the local Saxons. The auditorium was soon filling up nicely. After 1400 years, the structures came back to life and the fun began. <laughs>